Paris, France, capital of the culinary world, and a city where I spent my formative years as a chef. Having lived here for three years, just so happy to be back in Paris. The French are a nation of meat lovers, each eating an average of 90 kilos of the stuff every year. A vegetarian restaurant in Paris. My God. In the heart of the Marais, one of Paris's premier neighborhoods for gastronomic delights. Piccolo Teatro, a tiny vegetarian restaurant run by Scott Rachel McNally, is struggling to survive. It's nice to be your own boss, if you like, but uh, it's also very stressful, you know. I think if the restaurant was doing well and it didn't have all the debts that it had, then I would probably be sleeping a lot better. Millions of hungry Parisians and tourists flock past every day. But only a few are choosing to eat at Piccolo, and those that do wish they hadn't. Very fashy, mate. I'm putting sauce on you, Yes, you have. Since Rachel took over the business, she's been losing nearly five and a half grand every month. The debts are spiralling out of control, and if things don't pick up, she'll be closed in three months. Piccolo Teatro, fuck me. This is a first. I spent three years working my butt off in a Parisian kitchen, and I know just how tough it can be. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Nice, nice to, to see you. you. Likewise, good to see you too. Now, how does a beautiful Scott find herself in the middle of Paris running a vegetarian restaurant? How did I end up in Paris? Yeah. French man originally. OK. <laughs> um, well, I'm vegetarian since I can remember, so I was attracted to this restaurant. Really? Um, I'm dying to get in. The quicker I can get in, the quicker I can get out. Indeed. <laughs> I'm joking. The size of it is minute. Oh, right, sorry. Rachel runs the place with the help of her best friend Stephanie, her only waitress. You've been friends since four? Yeah. yeah. Amazing. There are just two chefs. Commie chef Fiona only works three mornings a week. Daniel is the head chef and resident philosopher. Mais tous les mes plats, je préfère qu'il y a des succès parce que là j'ai fait avec amour. Daniel. Daniel, bonjour mon ami. Vous êtes le chef responsable alors. Moi on fait la cuisine ici pour pour les clients et tout. D'accord. Where is the kitchen? Mais c'est l'espace, c'est extraordinaire. Regardez. Ah ah un deux trois. Is this one from Glasgow as well? Deux. No. Where is he from? Il est brésilien. He's Brazilian. Okay. What dish would you like to recommend for lunch? And in. Lasagna au pistache. Yeah, it's absolutely delicious. It's not on the menu at the moment. This is, this is normal? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Welcome to the madhouse. So we've got a pistachio nut, a walnut, and now a Brazilian nut. Classic. Mm -hmm. Italiano and there was a couple here um, the other day who had just got engaged that day. Right. And they ordered the hummus and they said it was the best they'd ever had in their lives. Yes. So. Uh, you might want to try it. I cannot believe I'm sat here in the middle of Paris. If my chefs, Monsieur Guy Savoie and Gerald Beauchamp, could see me now, they would beat the crap out of me, you know that? To start, the famous hummus salad, topped with raisins and dried onions. Get off there. I love hummus, but that's disgusting. So how would you describe the food? Not particularly spectacularly exceptional. Is this girl for real? <laughs> Next up, carrot gratin, which, if done properly, should have a gorgeous bubbling cheese crust. OK, so that's the gratin there. Yeah. Bon appétit. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost a, a bit of an insult to a vegetarian. Fine, they don't eat meat, but they deserve some form of respect in terms of cooking vegetables properly. Steph, have you got two minutes, please? Yeah. Time for this bunch of jokers um, to face the music. The joking and the fun and the singing and all that crap, that's fine when you've got a success. The food was shit. It wasn't nearly there. It was a mess. Most of the customers that come here do actually leave satisfied and do enjoy the food. OK. I'm deeply concerned because I've got to get him in the right frame of mind. And standing out being a vegetarian restaurant in the middle of Paris is a fucking hard task. OK. Thank you. Bad food and bad attitude, this is going to be tough. There's a lot riding on Piccolo succeeding. 
Rachel's got a young son to support, and her dad has invested at least £50,000 in the business. She needs to spill the beans. You haven't paid rent since last October? Since October, £1,600 a month should have been paid. And the tax man's owed €10,000. There is a bank That's... loan which hasn't been paid uh, for uh, about six months. It's going to take a lot of hard work to pull Piccolo back from the brink. And, and, and seriously, how bad do you want to save the business? Badly, yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Of course I do. It's the, I don't have anything else here, you know. It's my, it's, it's my, life, it's my livelihood. Piccolo clearly needs a massive shake-up. But before I make any changes, I need to see how Daniel runs the kitchen. It's Saturday night, but at 7 p.m., with the first table already seated, Rachel seems agitated. He's not ready, and there's hardly anything on the menu, so... He's not ready? to do some cooking yourself. What's he been doing for the last three hours? That's what I'm... I don't know. He's, a, he's a just... He's pretty chilled out. That's just the way he is. Daniel's first order is for two garden salads. Almost 20 minutes later, he's still fiddling with the salads. This is a joke. I've never seen anything like this. I've not seen anything Rachel. like this. This Brazilian nut has lost his marbles. Okay. Shall I have a oh, 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 No, 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 no. It's burning. 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 No, 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 it's burning. It's burning. It's burning. It's burning. It's burning. Rach, there's a pan here burning. I'm trying to change the pan for him, and he's just telling him to leave it there. Uh, he dit que ça brûle, le casserole brûle. Ça brûle, c'est normal. Pourquoi c'est normal? Pourquoi c'est normal? Explique-moi pourquoi c'est normal. Non, attendez, attendez. Let's, let's, let's. Explique-moi pourquoi c'est normal. Stop, 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 stop. Tu laisses là. There are now eight people in the restaurant, and barely anyone is getting served. I mean, I've seen some bad kitchens in my time, but not quite as disorganized and fucking chaotic as this. Daniel is clearly hard to handle, but Rachel is the boss. You're right. Uh, no, I'm not all right. I'm really fucking pissed off. In three fucking hours, he could have made a fucking dish or two, and he's fucking doing it on purpose. He should be fucking just, ashamed. Just, I'm ashamed. Yeah. I'm fucking this guy's ashamed to go your and business. see any fucking this customers. Guy's killing your business. This is so sad. You know that. But he needs to get his fucking acting gear, and he needs to do something because we're going to fucking fall out big time. Anyway, I'm going inside to see what's going on. Daniel's lack of respect is disgusting. Get him out, send him home and fucking you know, salvage something. Get some money in the till. This is happening now. Apparently, it happened last weekend as well. Guy's a joke. Chérie, va à la maison. C'est pas possible. Il y a rien d'autre à servir. C'est fini. Tu vas à la maison. On parle plus. On parle appeler. Mais c'est sérieux. Tu mets moins dehors. Je suis sérieuse. Oui. Oui. Absolument. Je suis sérieuse. C'est Steph qui va servir les gens. Je suis sérieuse. Non. Je suis sérieuse. Les gens sont trop attendus. J'ai la honte. J'ai la honte. Tu vas à la maison. C'est mon décision finale. Attends, 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 attends. On prend une solution. Bonsoir, monsieur et madame. Bonsoir. Why is it all the customers? Vous avez payé l'addition déjà? We've asked nicely. Where are the heavies when you need them? 
Ah non, non, il ne faut pas... Non, il faut la dernière place. Daniel, let's go. Attention, on va passer. Laisse, 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 no, he okay, 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 okay. Well, it wasn't a very good experience. The, it was uh, entertaining. It was entertaining. Highly it was entertaining. D dinner theater with the <laughs> plates crashing around in the background. And our food wasn't very good, to put it politely. The couscous was crunchy. The tart was completely burnt to a crisp. Burns. <laughs> Quite burnt. It looks like I'm going to have to take Daniel to the nut house myself. <laughs> It's very hard to control them, and that is a problem. Fucking shame, man. Saturday night, what a fucking mess. Oh He's God. still here! Ça va, Fuck, mate. Fuck, mate. Let's start again. We could um, not have continued with that. I, we can't, and I can't take him back now after that, because that, that's just totally yeah. unexpected. It's completely disrespectful to me. How much do we take? 150 euros. Mm. Fucking disaster, please. You may have lost your chef, but fuck me, you've got your restaurant back. I spent three years working in Paris in my early 20s, so coming back should have been a dream come true. But last night, vegetarian restaurant Piccolo Teatro hit rock bottom. How are we? I've called a crisis meeting with the remaining staff. Right? Yeah. Good. Fiona? Yeah? Enchanté? Enchanté. How are you today? Fine. Good. And you are the... Daytime morning cook. chef, yeah. Excellent. Fiona can't work evenings, so Rachel is on the lookout for a new head chef. In the meantime, I'll need Stephanie to help out in the kitchen during service. What I'm trying to say to you, when you see how easy it is, you'll be amazed. I can help for a wee while. A wee while. Cooking at this level doesn't have to be difficult. Any of us could do it. I've only got four days to turn things around, so there needs to be a big change in attitude around here. I know. It's nice to have a little sort of cosy restaurant in the middle of the night, but we've got to start thinking about some form of discipline. Yeah, I think Daniel is exceptional. Like, and, and Can I just say one thing? It's very complicated working for a friend. It's very complicated for her, uh, and it's very complicated for me. Friendship, whatever, it's got nothing to do with it. It's a business first. Yes. And the quicker we start getting our minds around to turning it into a, a business, it's everybody else follows suit. But before we do anything, yeah, and I mean seriously before we do anything, this place needs a good fucking clean. clean yeah. Yeah. Rachel opens for lunch at weekends, but there's no way we can serve lunch today. Where do you start? Huh? Fucking hell. They're fucking pigeon food. It's nice, nice. Oh, oh fucking hell. What is that? Carrot and lasagna. Yeah. Fuck me. Watch out, there's a lasagna coming. Don't touch it, it bites. This is food which Gordon wants to throw out, because once it's had a wash, it'll be perfectly fine. You can see why I don't want you to eat anything from the fridge. It's got cinnamon in it. I don't, the, the... It's off. Yeah, I know. When was the last time that was clean? It's Two a blessing ago. in disguise that meat hasn't been cooked in this kitchen. Fuck it now. With hygiene standards this low, they would have been wheeling out the customers by the coffin load. That's food in there, then. Yeah. Wow. Huh? Why the fuck would anyone keep fucking all the flies up there? Rachel used to be the waitress here. And what's crystal clear is that she's still acting like one. Fucking hell. Got to take responsibility. This is your money here. Huh? Rotten and fresh food stored together. None of this is safe to eat. Why have you let it get into this state? I don't know. No. <laughs> We're going to start cleaning again. Now, I've got to work out how on earth do you make a vegetarian restaurant in Paris successful? Fewer than 2% of the French population are vegetarian. But 27 million tourists flock to Paris every year. Surely, some of them are veggies. Are you a vegetarian? A vegetarian? No. No, 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 no. No. I like meat. You like meat? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been to a vegetarian restaurant? No. 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 Um, are you vegetarians? No. no. Finding a vegetarian in Paris, yeah, is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Are you vegetarians? No. No. Why not? Because I like meat. Are you a vegetarian? Uh, yes, I eat some fish, but I'm vegetarian. 
The only way Piccolo will survive is by serving veggie food that even meat eaters will love. Huh? All good food comes out of a small kitchen. Yes. It's time to get started on Piccolo's drop-dead delicious new menu. Until Rachel finds a new head chef, I'm relying on part-time commie chef Fiona. Kidney beans in first. Yeah. Beans in. A rich, spicy two-bean chilli should have the veggies and carnivores chomping at the bit. Keep it all nice and fresh. Yeah. Yeah? Summertime, exactly. Lovely, huh? There's also a very cheesy tomato and aubergine gratin to replace that tasteless slop I was served yesterday. Yeah. Seasoning is really important, yeah. I never put salt in my... In my you cooking. never put salt in your cooking? No. no. Not, no, not never. OK. But I'm vegetarian French. Vegetarian French, you can still season things. I know their food is bland in general, but you can still season it. Yes? Mmm, <laughs> look at that, look. Mmm, salt. Ooh, salt. <laughs> I'm gonna look. Salt. Ooh, okay, salt. Okay, yes? I use it. Ooh, in England we go like this, it brings you good luck, yes? <laughs> yes, yes. So now every day I want to put salt. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Fiona's worked a few extra hours today, and it's that sort of commitment this business needs. 5.30, go pick up your daughter. Okay. Missy. Huh? Thank yeah. you. Uh, bon soir. Yeah. OK. Et yeah, à demain, oui. Passez bon soir. Merci. OK. On a besoin de courage ce soir. Oui. Hop. Oui. Very good day. I'm happy. Stephanie has agreed to cook tonight. But at 6 o'clock, neither she nor Rachel are anywhere to be seen. If they think I'm their new head chef, they can go spin. Earlier, Rachel went off to feed her pregnant cat. Stephanie had to go and sleep because she wasn't feeling very well. And look, we're an hour away from opening and there's not one fucker in here bar myself. So, uh, yeah, if you're going to open a restaurant, fucking don't play at it, work at it. Uh, no sign of Steph yet? No. Anyone want to call her or...? I, I will call her, yeah. I just would expect she would have been back. I'll give her a ring. No kittens yet. Rachel's up to her neck in debt. The business is on its knees and yet it all seems a big joke to her. Right, try and hurry up, please. OK. OK. Oh. I'm starting to feel like they're taking the mickey out of me. I need to know, you know, are you seriously interested in turning this around? I don't get the feeling and I'm just like, what the fuck am I doing here? Busting my ass off in your establishment to help turn this around. I... You went home. And you said this morning you'd be back I at 3.30. I had to my cat who's about that. to give birth. I had no choice and I had to have a shower. Okay, I thought see. we were going to be doing some stuff in the kitchen together. So uh, as you didn't well, get... Nobody said anything uh, right. about that. Right. said you'd be back soon, but never mind. OK, are we going to get serious or... Because, you know, should I tell you how I feel? I'd rather fuck off home. That's how I feel. Because I don't feel any form of commitment. Um, I, I, I think it's an incredibly admirable enterprise what you're doing. Oh, and I think Rachel's oh, me, stop, totally stop, stop, committed. Stop, 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 come on. Let's get a little bit real than that. Uh, let, let, look, let, I'm committed no to her, up. but I'm not, I'm not, you know... I, I, mean, I just I don't get it with you. To be, to I, I be think right. you're a fake. I don't, I, I, I don't get any fucking... Not, I'm not asking you to lay down a red carpet or kiss my ass. I just, I want commitment. And I don't feel that. That's no. all. Well, you're not going to get that if you tell people they're a fake. I, I, but you, you've just arrived. Yes, and I'm just going to leave. I'm really committed to Rachel, but I'm not... I just can't... I just refuse to be harassed yeah. and insulted. Harassed. Insulted? Yes. Incredible. Harassed and insulted. Fuck me. Take a good look at yourself. Thank you. Oh, you're not there. I've got lots of fucking people tonight and you're leaving me in the fucking lurch. Yeah, but I can't... Right, right we'll fucking leave, leave then. Here. OK. Bye, bye. Cheese, Dave. Nice one. Sorry. Oh, no. Fucking hell, man. We're now down to one member of staff. And I just don't know if she's committed to saving her business. I've never worked with such fucking limp dicks in all my life. I've had enough. Rachel can sort out this staff crisis herself. Yeah, Gordon Ramsay's gonna fucking leave. Mad panic trying to find somebody to work uh, with about 10 fucking minutes to go. Uh, so I just went to the Scottish pub and they said to come over here and uh, one of the girls in there phoned somebody and I found somebody. So she's coming in 10 minutes. She's gonna be in the restaurant in 10 minutes. I think I, I'm just, I've just been so many crises that I'm just starting to get sort of less stressed about it, you know. 
Leaving Rachel alone is the best thing I could have done. Gosh, there's not much in the fridges. There's some, there's some salad. She's found a temporary waitress and has decided to go into the kitchen herself. Uh, OK, so I, I'm actually going to be in the kitchen because the, normally my friend was supposed to be in the kitchen and she's she just walked out, so... Okay. Oh, so who's doing the, the dining I, I found a waitress to come and... Okay. and uh, so, well, you, you, uh, so I'm going to be in here. Okay. I'm giving Rachel one last chance to prove she really wants to save this restaurant. Mm. Yeah, tart is in the oven. Mm. So we get the plate out and put the salad on there. Thankfully, really these nice. new dishes are foolproof. The chilli's ready to go. The, the gratin the chilli for table five. And the gratins simply need heating up. The first of Piccolo's new hearty dishes are already hitting the spot. I love vegetarian food. <laughs> and about four minutes now for the main course. Don't forget to give them some bread, On yeah? table eight. Dad, can, uh, can I phone you back? All right. Oh, cool. Oh, is India coming to do some work? Oh, magic. Okay. Rachel's dad has a financial right, okay, stake in Piccolo magic, and has been looking for a new head chef. Speak to you later. Bye. Oh, my dad's coming over with somebody. And she's a chef, so she's coming over tomorrow with my dad for... I don't know if she's coming over to, for how long, but she's going to help out anyway for the time being. Oh, that's good news. Rachel has just been thrown a lifeline. <sighs> Fucking hell, what a nice. Um, it started off as a disaster. I felt at 6.30 this afternoon that I really wanted to get the fuck out of it, to be honest. Um, no substance, no commitment, and uh, two sort of tizzies playing at running a restaurant, so... Stephanie fucked off, her attitude stinks, and uh, Rachel's finally woken up. I'm glad she started to sweat, because that's what it's like running a restaurant, and uh, if she really wants this to succeed, then get used to working like this, because it's a business. We've got a phenomenal possibility of a great success here, but it needs a commitment. And that doesn't mean a commitment from a waitress, it needs a commitment from a boss, somebody who's running the place. So, you know, you proved tonight that you can do it so fucking well done okay cheers now things are finally looking up it's time to deal with one of rachel's biggest mistakes not opening for weekday lunch hordes of hungry tourists swarm to marry looking for a quick cheap lunch and many head for the snack bar at the end of rachel street She should be working hard to grab a slice of the action, but doesn't think it's worth it. We opened at lunchtime for about a month, and uh, it was a complete waste of time, really. Uh, but there was just nobody here. There was no customers. We had maybe two, three sometimes, paying someone in the kitchen, someone in the thing. And then because you're doing the starting main course, there's a lot of washing up. <laughs> Let's go get some business. Nah, I'll prove that by offering a quick, good-value lunch, Rachel could earn some much-needed cash. Madame, 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 c'est 200 mètres à gauche. Si gros. Madame, 200 mètres, tout droit, à gauche, le restaurant. Si gros. But I know this stubborn Scott will take some convincing. So unbeknownst to her, I'll be opening the restaurant for lunch myself. Always dreamt of having my own restaurant in Paris. And finally, it's here. Chez moi à Paris. Unfortunately, it's a fucking vegetarian restaurant. So, uh, yeah, soup and a roll. If the soup's good, they'll be back for dinner. They've all sat down at the same time. Now I'm in the shit. There's roasted vine tomato soup with cheese on toast for a bargain price of six euros. And you don't have to be veggie to enjoy that. Service. Oh, it's me again. Lovely. Usually roasted this morning. Bingo, bingo. Good. Rachel better appreciate this. I don't even work this hard in my own restaurant. Coming up, four. Serve the other people first. Right, that's very kind, thank you. Je suis dans le mer. Did you leave a tip, by the way? Uh, there's more sun than actually. Okay, good man, good man. Excellent. Right, six in. Not opening yes. for lunch in such a prime location is either madness or laziness. The soup was the best soup we've ever had. It was really, really yummy. Yeah. This was fabulous for us in terms of price. 20 past two. I feel like a pig in shit. Fucking marvellous. Now all I've got to do is show Rachel what her laziness is costing her. Morning. Hello. How are you, my darling? I'm all right. I'm a bit tired because my 
my cat gave birth in the night. That's fantastic. So after. How many cats have you got? There's only two, luckily. Sorry. We bowl a soup. If someone opened my restaurant without telling me, believe me, I'd notice immediately. Good. Can you make the soup? I did make this soup, yeah. I've had a fucking busy morning. What have you been up to? Can you not see the sign outside? No. No. Ah. Oh. The one there. I, 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 I don't know what we've taken, and I'm not fucking around by any means. But did for you me, say all that this morning? On six euros a head, I swear to God, I am not fucking around. And I don't know if I believe you. I'm just not quite sure I believe you, actually. But anyway, OK, I think it's at six euros, that's an awful lot of people that you've served soup for this oh, was, I, was I the shit? I swear to God, they were standing up there, and there was a queue, and they were coming in and coming out. I cooked and I served on my jack. Right. 300. 300. That's 430. Clearly, money talks. Seriously? As an eye-opener? It worked. 450 euros. I'm absolutely fucking astonished, really. Uh, it's really exciting. Uh, if we could do that every day, then the whole business could turn around just, just from lunchtime alone. I'm nearing the end of my week in Paris, where I'm trying to say vegetarian restaurant Piccolo Teatro and rescue a damsel in distress. So you just don't have the support of all your family and different friends. And, you know, quite often I will phone my mum or my dad and be ah, down the phone, you know. <laughs> it's been disaster after disaster. Cheers, Steph. Nice one. But the cavalry has just strolled into town. Hearing of Rachel's crisis, her father Brian, who is invested in Piccolo, has flown in from Scotland, bringing 23-year-old chef oh, right, India. Name, sorry, first name, excuse me? Brian. Brian, nice to see you. Welcome. Am I pleased to see you? And this is India. Uh, this is India. India. The my daughter. Uh, how am I, my darling? India's going to be a right-hand man. I can't wait. Or something. <laughs> uh, we need it. I'm going to go back to the hotel, pick up my weights, and Great. get back in. I like Brian already, and I need to bring him up to speed. Look, soup with the cheese on toast for six euros. And about you took 400, 400 euros? Must have had about 90 people in here. For really? That. Six euros. Mm. Why would you disbelieve quite fucking incredible. <laughs> well, it shows you what you're doing wrong. Sure exactly. I'll be more enthusiastic and yeah. motivated if there's money coming in. What do you think's wrong with the business? Well, I think a bit more has to be put into it, a bit more commitment from Rachel. Yeah. I think, I think her, 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 her weaknesses are running a business. And just take charge. That's Good. And you're going to be here for the next three months, right? <laughs> Style, right? Thank God for Brian. Huh? Now all I hope is that India's got what it takes. Um, I'll be leaving my work, uh, my family, first time abroad on my own. Um, be very hard, um, but I'm sure I'll do. I'll do good, and I'll produce good food. I know Paris is an exciting place for a young chef. I was the same age as India when I came to live here. And there it is there, 83 Rue de Roquette, 20 metres squared flat, absolutely minute. It's amazing. I used to sit there with the windows open and just have this amazing baguette, yeah? Café creme and just sit there and think about recipes, ideas, and then walk up and down the street, go inside boulanger, patisseries, and then come up with dessert ideas, run back and start writing them down. Paris is an inspiring city. I want to start India off on the right foot by showing her the incredible produce she'll be using if she stays here. On the passe aujourd'hui pour voir les très bons produits. Maintenant, c'est un saison extraordinaire, non? C'est l'été, oui. On a tous tous ces fruits, ces tomates qui apparaissent. Donc, il y a de quoi s'amuser pour un pour un cuisinier. Très bien. This is beautiful stuff. The quicker India learns French, the better. Non. Peut-être. Peut-être. Quelques. Quelques. Quelques betteraves. Quelques betteraves. Oh, no. 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 Oh, Excellent. Off you go. Okay. Um, so exciting stuff there, no? Oh, amazing. Huh? Lovely. And you, you, the French sound is fantastic. Oh, thank you. Back at Piccolo, Brian's pep talk seems to have done the trick. Rachel has arrived early. Tonight's India's first service, so I'm going to be on hand to help out if she needs me. 
how old were you first started cooking? Fifteen. Fifteen. Well, really? no, sorry, fifteen when I was a KP and then six, just turned sixteen, and they were like getting. Really, that's good. That's very good. Yeah. Mushrooms. Okay. A little bit of seasoning. I've added a new hot starter, a classic on any bistro menu: pan-fried wild mushrooms on hot buttered brioche. A little bit of parsley in there. Okay, I'll just let them all sort of cascade. And have a little taste of the girolles. Full of flavour. India in the kitchen for the first time. Work as a team. If you guys aren't talking, yeah, she won't know what's going on and you won't have a clue what's going on. We're just going to start off a brand new relationship. Yeah? Thank fuck you're here. Yeah. I was 23 when I came to Paris for the first time, you know that? Yeah. And I was absolutely shitting myself. I'm shitting yeah. myself. Yeah, <laughs> good. That's a healthy <laughs> sign. Yeah? India's got seven years' experience as an assistant chef. But tonight, I want to see whether she's got the ability to take charge of this kitchen. We'll organise the tickets from left to right. And as we send the starters, we'll just put a little crisscross off there. Okay. For the main course, you have aubergine, mozzarella and tomato. So, now you tell me, what are you going to do? Two soup and a uh, tart. Good. What was I concerned about? This kitchen's never known such speed and efficiency. And where's the ticket, please? It'd be a lot easier if we've got a ticket for dessert. Right now, the only weak link in this team is the boss. OK, the mushrooms. I want to make damn sure she knows how lucky she is. What's the difference between her and Daniel? Just go back four nights ago. Seriously, no, but in terms yeah. of you couldn't get a salad out. This yeah, has exactly. been real now, huh? This no, is, no, yeah, yeah, you've yeah, got absolutely. a fucking gem in there, huh? No, 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 absolutely. Absolute gem. Now the kitchen's in safe hands, I want Rachel to realise that to make money, Piccolo's vegetarian food needs to have mass appeal. Paris screams sex, glamour, indulgence and hedonism. Everything that vegetarian food isn't, but needs to be. I brought you here tonight to sort of confirm that Paris is about sexiness, indulgence, Lots of cream, lots of butter, and they flaunt lots it. Lots of cream, butter, and cheese in my restaurant. I want you... everyone to come in and say, ooh, quel bon surprise. OK, good. I had a okay. yummy okay. dinner tonight, and okay. I'm not so... veggie, and I loved it. Thank you. Tomorrow, we're going out on the street, and we're going to make your restaurant fucking sexy. Last night, Rachel got excited about food. Maybe we're finally on the same wavelength. This afternoon, we're going out on the streets of Gay Parry, armed with tempting tarts, on a mission to convince everyone that vegetarian food has changed. The objective today, take in boring, bland vegetarian food to something sexy, vibrant, and a pure indulgence. While India fills the savoury tarts with a tasty herb goat cheese, commie chef Fiona and I are making a very naughty chocolate mousse to fill the sweet ones. That will give any French tart a run for its money. Don't worry about the calories, OK? Yeah? <laughs> yeah same trick. Bedtime. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Brian, you're doing a grand job. Vegetarian food is no longer boring. And all in the tree. Lovely. It's time to put Piccolo on the gastronomic map of Paris. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> to make sure no one can miss us, we've enlisted the help of a few of Paris's finest tarts. Are you a vegetarian tart? Help yourself, please. Gracias, gracias. I love vegetarian tarts. But if we're on a resto, on a resto vegetarian, it's really good on the marriage. Vegetarian. If the enthusiasm of these punters is anything to go by, it's going to be busy for tonight's launch. Sweet. Delicious.
Piccolo's future looks so much rosier, but it depends on whether India is ready to trade her settled life in Edinburgh for this head chef's job in Paris. I've spoke to Rachel. Um, yeah. I'll take the position as long as she That's great news. gets her finger out her arse uh -huh. and starts working hard and on their own time. As soon as you go away, it better not. No? Yeah. No. Keep it up. You've got to stand strong on that. Yep, yep, yep. And you're 10 years younger than yep. the owner, but you're 10 years more mature. And don't fall in love. No, I won't. Fuck them. Oh. <laughs> I'm too busy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I want to make sure Brian's going to keep the pressure on, as I'm still worried about Rachel's attitude. They're going to have to seriously run it as a business and make money, which they've got every chance of doing. I hope, finally, she's, um, she gets a message. But you need to make sure that she stays disciplined on it. That's one big ask from you. Well, that she God, has to all I can discipline. do is try. Yep. I can only do so much. Yep. Anyone, yourself, or anyone who, who may, she may listen to for advice, business advice, can only do so much. It's down to her. Thank you. In just a few hours, we're launching Piccolo's new sexy vegetarian menu, and India's decided to add one of her own dishes. We've got beetroot, we've got cheese mixed uh, salad, mm -hmm. and the, the dressing is chive, basil, and mm. olive oil. So we can do that as a starter? Ooh, nice. Would you like a taste? That's lovely. Mm. Nice. nice. Love it. All the dishes on the new menu are indulgent, rich and filling, like this toffee apple tartar tan. So when we cut through the apples, it's got this really nice dark caramel. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> and creamy okay. pea and courgette cheese tart. Beautiful. Go cheese, lovely. Little block like that. As it cooks, it just melts across there. After all the disasters, tonight's launch needs to mark a new beginning for Piccolo and for Rachel. You are the boss. And what you say goes. And they're all going to follow suit. If they see you not giving a fig and you, you know, over relaxed and over comfortable, everybody else does it. And you've got such an amazing chance here. You need to, to behave right. more as a boss. Yeah, and if people, if anyone that's unemploying is not going to listen to me, then they can fuck off, basically. Um, new menu, new chef, new attitude. Six. Six. I like that. Rachel's sound, talking the talk, but at opening time, she's yeah. still not ready. Right, ready to open the doors up? I need some bread first. Who's going to get the bread? Garden. <laughs> Where the fuck am I getting bread this time of night? It'll be fine. I'm chilled, I'm chilled. Yep. You're always chilled, are <laughs> you talking about? Rachel's okay, also left it till the, the, the last day. minute to get an extra waitress. OK, bye-bye, bye. Is that Laura? She's going to see a show, she can't. <laughs> OK. Her constant careless and unprofessional attitude is really depressing me. Can you go? How about thank you, you miserable wee bitch? That's right, with a capital fucking B. And may we have a ticket for the dessert tonight, please? Oui, je chef. Peux Très bien, merci chérie. <laughs> no ticket, no food. Our tarts have worked their magic, and the restaurant is filling up quickly. Bread. Sure. Right, it's all at the same time. You've got one tart, one gratin, and one salad. Uh, Piccolo's new menu is a million miles from the bland brown slop they were serving just a few days ago. So think with me, two tarts in the oven, OK? OK. If we both think about them, we don't forget them. OK. There's also a beautiful creamy chilled melon soup, and India's beetroot salad is an instant hit. I like a good beet. I like that salad, by the way. Nice and fresh. Yeah, it's delicious. I, I have a feeling you all have food in me. Mm. So what tables are ready? Four and just four? Seven. Seven? The only problem is the rather charmless service. You can put it anywhere. Right, OK. Bouche <laughs> ton cul, chérie. That means move your ass. Yeah. At least the food is keeping everyone happy. Make sure they save room for dessert. The ashes were beautiful. Yeah. The mushroom thing was just spectacular. I always thought vegetarian food was bland, boring, uh, but obviously it's not. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Everyone, yeah. Vegetarian cooking has changed. Rabbit food is out. Sexy, indulgent, vegetarian cuisine is in. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Tonight proves that Piccolo has the potential to be a success, but I'm still very worried about the future. 
I'm not 100% convinced that Rachel has the right attitude to run a business. And if this doesn't work, and she doesn't make money in this place, unfortunately, she's only got herself to blame because it's all here. All right, listen. Don't let me down. OK. And so far, yeah, you've done a fucking good job. Okay. Yeah, though. Keep it up. OK. Stay nice and calm. OK. Work hard. OK. Yeah. And I know damn well you can do it. OK? okay. Keep in touch. OK. I'll... Yeah. Best of the British. OK. See you later. Well done. Hey. Good luck. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Thank fuck we're here. Remember that. OK. Now make it yours. Yes? Thank you. By the end of the night, Piccolo took a record-breaking 1,000 euros, minutes, ten Thank times you. more than the first night I arrived. You're not the head waitress. You're the boss, OK? Yeah. Yeah? Right. Goodbye. Okay, I'll see you soon. Then. And good luck. Yes? Thanks very much, Rob. OK. Keep Cheers. it going. Cool. Yeah? If not, not, I'll come back and run it. I'd love to have my own restaurant in Paris. Yeah. You know that? Good luck. Cool. Thanks, See you well. soon, yes? Cheers. Take Thanks. care. Everything about the restaurant is, I think, is going to change thanks to this experience. So, really, really pleased. With this. There's just one last thing I've been dying to do before I leave Paris. Fucking hell! Have I missed you? Oh. Mm. Fucking hell! Oh. I'm back in Paris, and there's bad news. Piccolo Teatro has closed for good. When I left six weeks ago, the place had huge potential, a great new menu, and a talented young chef in the kitchen. What a shame. I want to know why it all went so wrong. And the first person I've arranged to meet is India. Nice to see you. Nice and to see you. What a shame that we're meeting here. Yeah. I'd hope you'd be back in the Marais. Me too, me too. Seen you in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Damn, what happened? You had to go home, pick up your stuff, etc. Yep. Uh, right back in Paris, uh, it was a shambles. Complete shambles. There was a mess, there was flies, mice. Uh... What, when, when you came back? Yeah. It took me like four days to clean the restaurant. But where was Rachel? Uh, she, uh, she wasn't there. It was me and her father. We opened up and we'd done a lunch service. Uh... You opened up without her? Yep. Just, I, I made a beautiful menu up. I'd done all your all your dishes, uh -huh. and I added some more dishes on. Um, and we'd done a great lunch service, but then Brian just says, no, nope, that's it, I've had enough. What a shame. I'm so sad not to be here. I love it so much. Yeah. And I love the food. Yeah. It's a shame. Rachel's laziness has cost India her job. Uh, yeah, there's no pressure. I want to make sure her career doesn't suffer. Let's look at getting you some work experience in London. If she's not going to, you know, take full advantage of your level of excitement, then Fuck it. I will. Okay. Okay? Okay. I just can't believe how irresponsible and selfish Rachel's been. She's agreed to meet me today, and I want to hear what she's got to say for herself. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, uh, where's uh, madam? Not coming. Oh, come on. Surely she can face the music, at least have a word. I've asked her. I've just asked her. Oh, that's ridiculous. 15 minutes ago. Huh? Please to come. Gordon, I have no control over my daughter. I'm Rachel's immaturity is incredible. Brian's been propping up her business for years. And now that the merde has hit the fan, she's leaning to it. What a shame. Well, what I'm, an absolute I, I, fucking shame. I'm sorry, shame. and I, I can only apologise. Brian, you've got nothing to be sorry about. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm more sorry for you. Well, uh, these things happen, Gordon. Uh, we left with a setup. We, I didn't leave uh, it in, uh, a, in, uh, a, in a shit condition. Uh, and Rachel didn't try it? I mean, you know, did... No. No. From India's point of view, India did her best. She came over and, uh, but she, she, frankly, she didn't get the backup. Mm -hmm. India didn't get the backup. So no. I felt well. I probably didn't get the backup either. So I, I couldn't see it going on. You tried to help you. In an attempt to salvage something from the mess and recoup his investment, Brian is selling the business. What about the debts? What happened to the debts? There was two loans on the business, and I paid one of them off. Um, you're an amazing guy. You bailed her out. Forty minutes late, Rachel decides to show her face. Take a seat. How are you? I'm fine, very well, thank you. Uh huh. When India came back, excited and motivated to come and support your business, and she walked into a shithole. Yeah, it was a mess. It was, an... it was a disaster. Why? Um, the place was as it was when you left. You're lazy. You put nothing into it, 
and you deserve a kick up the fucking ass, okay. Missy. And I, I'm, I'm amazed. I, I really am. The point is that I have been stressed out and not enjoying the. Uh, I've been stressed out, and since I closed, decided to close down, I feel like a big weight is lifted off my shoulders. I'm sleeping for the first time in three years. You had every possibility, Rachel, of making this successful. That's a decision I, I, I've made, and I'm feeling really happy about it. And it's fascinating to watch you, in a very cocky way. I'm not being cocky at use all. Use your that father's I'm feeling... money and abuse it. You're very lucky. Right, I've had enough. Oh. I had enough of your abuse. I don't need this delegation. I don't need it. Sorry. I'm out of here. Abuse? I don't need it. Oh. What can I say, God? What can I say? Thank you. Again, thanks for coming in the. Oh, fuck. Russians close easily especially when the owners aren't committed 110% to put it back on track. The only saving grace in my week at Piccolo is that I discovered India. I've offered a work experience at my London restaurant, Boxwood. Just got butterflies in my tummy, just wanted to get in the kitchen and start working. She'll be joining a brigade of 18 chefs led by head chef Stuart Gillis. Good to meet you. Young, tenacious. Talented, yeah. yeah, and dying to learn. And you love food? Love food. Right, that's a starting qualification for me, love food. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way on earth I'm going to let a talented young girl like India Maybe forget her dream. I think she'll be at home back. here and she can shine. If Rachel can't spot the talent in India, then I definitely can. This girl's got a great future.